Then entered Don Bradman, greatest batsman the world has known. Dozens of books had been written about Sir Donald Bradman. You'd already written four. Why write another one? It's a memoir, uh, Tracy. It was a totally different animal from the books written before because I'd had six years with him. Face to face, a lot of the time, letters, tapes, everything. And it was able to distill the character. That's what the memoir does. And that was the challenge. How would you describe the man that you got to know? Witty, sharp, took no prisoners with some of the humour. And sometimes you'd ask, ask him a tickly one and he would belt you for four. But it was still a lot of fun, basically. And once the abrasiveness, you got used to the, his directness. It was terrific. It was really good. Sir Donald Bradman was known for his remarkable batting average and for his win-at-all-costs attitude, but critics called him aloof and self-obsessed. Some people might have viewed him as arrogant. Never. Never a chess beater. If you're talking about um, someone well-rooted in who they are, strong ego, but never arrogant in that sense, no. Not in his nature. He never belittled anyone. You talk about how it's hard to change mythology and what people have come to believe about a person. What are some of the big things about Bradman that you wanted to clear up? Oh, I think, look, his life outside cricket with um, his love of music, a genuine love of music, and he was a very good at the piano. He was more interested in composers and singers like his granddaughter Greta than cricketers or golfers or anything. That's where his passion lay and they were his heroes. The way he relaxed after a big oh, day of cricket was music. This utterly unique. There's one genius coming down with another. Some people um, would like to get drunk. Some people like to go and party. Brabant went back to the hotel room, he was abroad, and played uh, a Chopin symphony for several hours. Another suggestion was that he was a teetotaler. Yeah, that's a beauty. Uh, he was a teetotaler till he was 40. And then he began to drink, and he, like everything he did, he did it well, and he enjoyed his scotch and his wine. Bradman was devoted to his wife, Jessie. The pair met when he was 12, and she was 11. She was a wonderful woman, a very generous woman, and everyone said, you know, she was the strength behind him, and, you know, the old cliché, but it really was true. After she died, he did go downhill, and he used to say, I've got nothing to live for. It was never to get sympathy, never. He just was trying to ease out. It, took, it was three years later that he died, but it was a matter of him having, she was the rock in his life. You tell an interesting story about when you'd chosen the photograph to be on the biography you'd written. He rang the publisher and said, I don't want it in. And I went through the, the problems he had with it. The pads were dirty and I said, look, they can airbrush that. I looked glum. I said, no, look, you look very, you're ready to make 300. You're about to make 300. And it didn't seem to be working because I knew from the phone calls when I wasn't convincing him. And then I said, look, what's more, the editor, Amanda Hemmings, thinks she looked really sexy in the photograph. And he, quick as a flash, he came back. Well, tell her she's 50 years too late. <laughs> and the photo was in. I'm sorry to say that this is going to be my last tour in this country and that I do not intend to play cricket anymore, even in Australia. After retiring, Bradman avoided the limelight, regularly knocking back requests for interviews. He doesn't need the media. He never needed it. He was quite rude and abrupt to people. If they were rude to him or were rude to Jesse, for example, on the phone, he would give them short shrift and they'd never forget it. He had enough adulation from his playing days not to concern himself with more. Bradman's preferred form of communication was letters. It's estimated he received a total of five million during his career and through the decades after. At one point he was getting 400 a day and in England he was getting 600 letters a day. And he would answer the sensible ones, he called them, which was one fifth on average. And I said, how'd you work that out? And he said, only the sensible ones, why would I bother with the stupid ones? In the air. How do you think Bradman would have gone playing the modern game? Oh, it, it would have been just a no-brainer. I mean, his capacity to turn his mind to anything. I mean, his scores. He's the fastest scorer of the great batsmen. He would have been a star at this game. He just would have turned it on. Oh, Steve uh, Smith is the nearest to him in our history. 
And I was at the Ashes um, in, a few months ago and I watched him go down and I watched him come back with enormous courage and that's where he's on the same plane as Bradman. Do you think his achievements will ever be surpassed? I'd love to see it. I'd love to see 974 surpassed. I'd love to see um, the double hundreds. No one, most of them have played twice as many tests as he has. Smith, and it's a very poor comparison to make for Smith, but he's played 44 more innings from Brabham. He has three test double hundreds. Brabham had 12 in 44 less innings. Now, that's a stratosphere you've got to get up to. Smith's not there yet, but he's the nearest to it, and good luck, I hope I see it. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.